So a new film, uh, The Old Man and the Gun, which stars Robert Redford in what has been reported to be his uh, his final role. He's the, the, the narrator in Buttons, isn't he? But he has said, he's also said, never say never. Um, but he said, it, as he was going into it, he said, "This I think this is going to be the last one I do. I, you know, he said, I've been doing this for however long it is, since, since I was in my early 20s. And, you know, I've decided it. And whether or not it is his final role, I have to say it would be a brilliant note to end on. Not because I don't think Robert Redford has got more greatness in him, because I'm a huge fan of Robert Redford and he was lovely when he came on the show. And I love the fact that he, his assistant set his watch fast because he's always late. At least so the, half an hour. So the only way to do it is to make his watch tell completely the wrong time. So the story is, which is based on a true story, it says at the beginning, and it's also based on a true story, on the life of an American career criminal and perennial jailbird. Uh, he plays uh, Forrest Tucker, who at the beginning, we see Forrest and uh, Danny Glover and Tom Waits as a gang who rob a bank. And they do it in a way which is very polite, very low-key, and very unthreatening, and also weirdly smiling. Uh, they rob small banks, not too big a haul, and they do it in a way that they, you know, they wander into the bank, and Robert Redford says, you know, hello, this is a stick-up, and he pulls back his jacket to reveal that he has a gun. Does he have a gun? Did they actually see a gun? And hand over the money, thank you very much, puts it in the bag, and they walk out. And the first job we see them do, they walk out of it, and he gets into his car, and he drives off, and he's got this kind of beaming, beatific smile on his face. And on the freeway, he drives past a broken-down truck, you know, a, um, a, a wagon, and Sissy Spacek is standing there with the front open, looking at it, and there's steam coming out of the radiator, and he pulls over because he's a gentleman, he goes over and he says, "What well, you know, she says, I think it's the radiator. Do you think it could be the radiator? And he says, oh, yeah, it could be. She says, do you know about cars? He says, no. He says, no. And the next thing, they're in a diner together. So obviously he's given her a lift. They've called the thing. He's in a diner. And there's a sort of twinkly thing going on. He's charming. She's, you know, I mean, they're both characters who you immediately sort of find very, very likable. She's called Jewel. She's such a you know great name. And she says, so, you know, what do you do? And he says, initially, he says, oh, well, I'm in, I'm in sales. And then he says, no, I'm not in sales. I, I lied to you. I but I lied to you because if I told you what I did do, you wouldn't speak to me. And she says, well, tell me what you do. Okay, well, let's take this place. This place is not my style. But say it was a bank. And instead of that counter up there, that was really a teller's window. And that lady standing there was the teller behind the window. And you just walk in, real calm, and you find yourself a spot, and you sit down, just like we're sitting here. And you wait, and you watch. And that may take a couple of hours, might take a couple of days even, but you wait. It's got to feel right. The timing has to feel right. And when it does feel right, you make your move. So you walk right up, look her in the eye, and you say, ma'am, this is a robbery. And you show her the gun like this. So you hear that kind of, that, mm -hmm. that lovely sort of spark on his voice. Anyway, so... Because these robberies appear to be fairly low-key, nobody pays much attention to them, except for Casey Affleck's detective, who starts to realise that this story about these old guys holding up a bank, well, there's another story, another about the same guy, and he starts to put together an MO that actually it's the same people. It's not just one-offs, it's not random things, that they're doing this and they've been doing it for a while. So he starts to make it his mission to take them down. And he realises that all these kind of scattershot robberies are connected. Meanwhile, I mean, he dubs them the Over the Hill Gang, which is actually which, which nice. is very funny. Meanwhile, there is this kind of beginning of a relationship between Redford's character and Sissy Spacex's character. They're getting to know each other. And he's he sort of said, oh, actually, I'm joking about the bank thing. But he's sort of told her, but he sort of hasn't. She kind of knows, but she kind of doesn't. It's directed by David Lowry, who made um, Ain't Them Buddies Saints, which is this sort of Western revisionist, you know, modern Western, which I described at the time as having a feel of a film which took place in the aftermath of something. And he also did um, Ghost Story, which is such a, such a strange movie, very, very good. And he has, I mean, I, I love his filmmaking. I think he's, he's, he's very good at mood and he's very good at setting. And what happens in this is, you you're sort of charmed into the the life of these characters by the performances and the next thing you know you're sitting there in the cinema as i was sitting in the cinema with a smile on my face that went from ear to ear as this very low key very gentle very amiable story of bank robbing 
unfolds before you. And during the course of the film, it sort of refers back to this guy's life. And we find out more and more things about his life and more about who he actually is. And there's actually one moment in which they sort of rather cheekily use a clip from an earlier Redford film. So there is, because Redford has in his back catalogue The Sting and Butch and Sundance, which in some ways kind of thematically connect with that, you know, the idea of that you're doing a con, you're doing a robbery, you're putting stuff up, but, but you are, you know, it's Paul Newman and Robert Redford and you have great affection for these characters. And at the centre of it is the relationship between these uh, central characters. And the relationships are played so beautifully and so perfectly that it is impossible not to be completely won over by them. Firstly, between Forrest Tucker and Danny Glover's Teddy Green and Tom Waits' character. And Tom Waits, you know, I like it. I enjoy a Tom Waits impression. There is a sequence in this in which they're all sitting along a bar and Tom Waits starts to tell this story and I've just made a program for uh, BBC Four about Christmas movies. And I swear, if we hadn't locked the edit, I would have said we have to have the whole of Tom Waits doing this story about Christmas. I mean, he's just sitting in a bar, and he's just telling the story about you know my my you know, my mother you know following it off. He she married this guy. He turns out to be a cop, and you know. And anyway, I won't spoil it. So so he is just great. And the central relationship between Sissy SpaceX Jewel and Redford's Forest is really beautifully done. So much of it is to do with them sitting across the table from each other, having conversations that are about nothing, but are also kind of about everything. And it's, it honestly, the whole thing is so, it's really seductive. I loved being in the company of these characters. I love the way in which... On the edges of all this, you have Casey Affleck, whose whose character you know is kind of desperate to crack this story, to crack this case, but also is kind of bizarrely being shunted around by his superiors, and therefore starts to feel that there is a kind of weird uh, empathy between him and the people that he's theoretically trying to take down. Now, I know that thing about cops and criminals being two sides of the same coin is a you know is nothing new. There's that famous thing in adaptation, which is see every movie ever made. It's the way in which this is done. It's It's got a real old cinema feel to it. I mean, it looks and feels like a movie that was made in a different age. The pacing of it is completely anachronistic when you put it next door to, you know, what's happening in modern multiplex cinema. I, honestly, Simon, I, lo I loved it. I just loved it. I thought it was really... And I thought, as I said, it may not be his final movie, but if it is... If it is, what a, what a wonderful way of, you know, putting your... your maybe your, that's one of the reasons why he thinks it should be. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, I think he said that as, just as he was going into it. And, you know, who knows whether it actually will be. But I, 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 I just thought it was... I loved it. I really loved it. I thought it was that kind of that old, nostalgic... I mean, shamelessly nostalgic, shamelessly affectionate... Uh, portrayal of the outlaw lifestyle that does this brilliant job of mirroring what you know about Redford's screen career and the central character at the heart of all of this. Yeah, I just thought it was an absolute charmer.